Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Halation node. So this is another DaVinci Resolve effect available within Fusion, and it is studio version only. So Halation is basically the light scattering that we get from the dye layers of like motion film, like original motion film, like back in the day. And some cameras like it naturally give us those halations and that's what makes them great cameras. I mean, we think of like our area Alexas and our super expensive cameras. They kind of mimic some of this in their processing on their sensors. So if we zoom in on this footage here was probably shot on a Canon maybe, or maybe a Sony, which is super sharp and they don't seem to have nice analog style, uh, characteristics to it. It's just straight digital look, which is fine. Not my favorite, but it's fine. So we really don't see any halation going on anywhere in here. We, we see a little teeny tiny bit inside here, but it's not really prevalent because your halation is going to be like a red to white hue on your uh, high contrast areas from the light. So basically where it's white onto dark areas, that's where your halation is going to happen. Not everywhere, just in specific areas. So as an example, I've got some footage from my uh, G2 here, and I kind of want to show you what halation is. And uh, let me find a, so if we look at what my uh, G2 camera does here, let me go to the color space transformed. You can see naturally black magic on the G2s have this nice halation going on and it just gives it a more analog filmic look. So a little more filmic. So that's halation right there. That red that is on that black right there. So let's jump back into this footage that has absolutely no halation going on and let's see if we can add some. So we're going to hit shift space and type halation and add the halation node. And uh, if we go up, you can see it's way too much because this isn't realistic at all. So again, let's let's look at this and see what real halation looks like. That's it right there. So in order to mimic this halation, we need to dial some uh, stuff in here. So let's go back. And if we go to our settings on our halation, the first thing we get is our processing color space. And I'm going to leave it on timeline because uh, our media is the same as my timeline setting. It's just uh, sRGB, Rec. 709. So I don't need to change this. But if you do need to change it, you can select whatever processing color space your footage is in. Under isolation, we have our threshold levels so we can dial them down or bring them up so it's crazy but we're going to go ahead and bring them down now in this little block we have this view isolated region so if we select this we can view where our halation is actually occurring so we can bring these down so we're just getting in those areas we really want and that's still to me too much because i really uh Halation wouldn't really occur in any of this stuff right here on the edges, maybe, but not in this. So we can dial this down to get something we kind of want. Under normalization, this will just normalize our halation or find our minimum levels. But once we change this, this level is going to go no further than our other threshold right up here. So if I bring this down, you can see it's not going anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. Our film saturation level is just how saturated that film is. And we're going to leave that down. So let's go back to our look. So right now you can see we've got some halation going on and it's hitting our dark areas like it should be. It shouldn't be going on this light stuff. It should only be showing up in dark areas. So under our dye layer reflections, this is where we can kind of dial in that halation so we can make it stronger, make it weaker. So we can bring it down to make it a little more realistic. And under here, we can change our gamma of our halation. 
We can change our saturation. So if you want that to be a little less red, we can just dial our saturation down and we can change the spread. Under fine tune, if we select fine tune, we can fine tune on, under our relative red, green, and blue spread. But just so you know, actual halation from film is only gonna be in your reds, oranges, and whites. If you're getting any other color, that's usually your problem with uh, your post-processing because natural halation is in our reds. So I'm gonna uncheck that and not make any changes. For our secondary glow, we can have a secondary glow if we want, so we can pump up the strength. And if you look, it's gonna start bringing in our blue halation up here, which really isn't super realistic. Um, if we're getting blues and even our greens, that's usually from like a lens that's causing halation, not necessarily from your camera or your film or from the film processing. So we're gonna leave our secondary down. But if you want to use your secondary, you can adjust your gamma, your spread. And this filter right here is just a filter color. It's not going to change your actual color. This will stay blue, but it will use this filter color to alter that blue look. So as I move around, you can see it's staying blue. It's just filtering out these colors in that blue. So it's not necessarily changing it to green. And under here, we can change them independently on the red, the green, and the blue. So let's go ahead and knock that secondary strength back down. And let's look at our halation we have going on right here. And I know this is super subtle, but that's the point. This is just giving you a little analog character to your uh, stagnant, crisp, Sony-style uh, footage. So under our secondary glow, we have basic grain. So if you wanted to reintroduce grain to that uh, halation that's going on there, we can select that. We can change the strength of our grain. Now, mind you, it's not just putting a grain on the halation, it's putting it everywhere. So instead of using this, if you'd rather use an actual grain or film grain effect afterwards, that would be better off than using it within this node. But if you want, you can. So. You can change the strength, you can change the size, you can change the softness of the grain, and you can change the saturation levels of the grain. But we're going to shut that off. Under our global adjustments, we can just view the glow alone. So we can get that glow right there. And just so you know, this will output. So if I go to our media out, you can see it's outputting that view glow alone. So if you need to use that for anything, you can uh, just use that glow and you can uh, change your threshold levels to up it to do different weird effects if you want. But let's go ahead and dial it back down. And additionally, we can use this view glow alone to uh, kind of dial in some of our stuff. So if we need to reduce the highlights, we can reduce them or increase them. We can change our aspect ratio and we can correct any detail loss, but just know if I uncheck this, our image is gonna be blurry as we uh, change that detail loss. So that is the halation node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.